In this video I will show you how you can transform an infinite horizon maximization problem into a dynamic programming problem. I will also show you how you can obtain the Bellman equation and the Euler equation in this process. So let's start with a simple infinite horizon maximization problem. Let's assume you want to maximize the following function. You maximize the sum from t equals 0 to infinity of beta to the power of t, that's our discount factor, times u of ct. So we have consumption good that we can consume every period. We get some utility from that. And in the future, far distant future, we don't care as much about the utility we get relative to the utility we get from consumption today. So it's infinite horizon because we sum up all the utilities we get from today up to infinity. Let's add a constraint. Let's assume that you have capital. So today's Whatever you have today, you can either consume or you can invest it. If you invest it, you get a return. And today you actually have what you invested yesterday. So KT. Okay? So yesterday you chose CT minus 1 and KT. And today you got KT because that's what you invested. You get some positive return. And this you can now either consume or invest again. This equation has to hold for all t. Now we can maximize this using the Lagrangian method. We have one constraint at all time periods, so an infinite number of constraints. And we maximize respect to consumption and tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's capital stock. Note that k0 needs to be given, so we have an initial capital stock, can be 0, can be any value, but we need to have a value for the initial capital stock so we can maximize. Okay, now while we can transform this directly into a dynamic programming problem, I will do one step of simplification. And that step of simplification is related to this equality here in this constraint. Because there is an equality, I can solve this for ct. So ct will be equal to 1 plus r times kt minus kt plus 1. If I do this transformation and I plug it into this utility function, I can then just maximize the utility function with respect to kt plus 1, and I dropped ct. So I only have one variable left. Let me rewrite that in the way we would do it with the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian will be equal in the first period to the maximum with respect to kt plus 1 for all periods, the sum from t equals 0 to infinity of beta to the power of t times u of this. 1 plus r kt minus kt plus 1. This is our maximization problem if I do this replacement of C. Okay, hmm, I still have an infinite number of first order conditions. Let's see how this problem looks tomorrow, okay? I have this problem which let's call it L0 because that's today. That's in the very beginning, t equals zero. Let's look at this problem tomorrow. This will be L1, we maximize the sum from t equals 1 to infinity, still beta t, and still u of 1 plus r, kt minus kt plus 1. Hmm. These two are almost the same. So the maximization today is almost the same as the maximization I do tomorrow. There are essentially two differences. The first difference is all the indices in here are shifted by one forward. Here I need a k0. Here I know k1 and potentially k0. Here I do not know k1. I maximize and then find k1. Here I know k1. 
That's the first difference. The second difference is related to this discount factor. These two problems are very similar, but this is shifted the indexes by one and multiplied by this beta, because beta to the power of one is the first one I have. Here, beta is to the power of zero, so there's no beta here. That's the second difference. Hmm. We can actually rewrite this first period at, L, at t equals zero problem as something I maximize today in period zero plus tomorrow's problem. Let's do that. So L zero is then equal to the maximum, again, of all periods. Now, I only maximize this with respect to t equals zero. So I get u beta to zero is one, right? So I only have this term here. One plus r times k zero. k zero is given. Minus k one. k one I need to calculate. Plus L1. So now I maximize with respect to all the k's from, zero, uh, from 1 to infinity this function here. And I split it into L0 is now not this sum, but is something I maximize today plus what I, the problem I will have tomorrow. We can go a step further. At this L0, I need to know K0. So whatever I calculate here, whatever I maximize, this maximum will only depend on K0. If I give you a K0, you will determine what this function value will be. If I give you a different K0, you will have a different function value. But since K0 is the key starting point for you, I can rewrite this as depending on k0. This function does not depend on k0 anymore. This only depends on k1. So I'm able to rewrite that depending on k1. But remember there were two differences between those two. The first difference was I shift the indices by one and the second one was beta is multiplied here. So let me do that here. Let me rewrite that as beta times L, the same L we have here, of K1. Now I have a function that is the maximum of something I maximized today plus tomorrow's function. That's already very, very similar to the Bellman equation. Let's make some rearrangement and some small changes to make it actually into the Bellman equation. Now first, Bellman equation has v's here because of the value function and it drops indices. What it does is current stuff does not have indices and everything that happens tomorrow, we add a prime. So k0 becomes k and k1 becomes k prime. And this is our value function, or Bellman equation. Now, looking at this, we can maximize that. We can solve this. This also is the same problem we had up here. I can even transform it back, because I know this expression was C, right? So I can replace it by C and rewrite it, and then I have this constraint that um, k prime plus c, k prime plus c is equal to 1 plus r times k. And k is given. I will not do that because optimization is again easier if I don't have the c in here, but I have this constraint here. Okay. Let's take first order conditions. We maximize that with respect to k prime, right? Now it's just tomorrow's value, because that's a function of tomorrow's value. I don't need to worry about the infinite number of first order conditions I have. So let's take the first order condition 
and we have dv of k. It's very important to keep in here which k you're maximizing or which is the k of the value function as we will see in a moment. This will be equal, well there's k prime in here and there's k prime here. It's a sum of two terms so we can look at them separately. So the first one is u prime of 1 plus r times k minus k prime. Now the chain rule tells us, okay, it's minus k prime, so there's a minus one I need to multiply it with. So I have minus this u prime plus beta times the derivative of the value function with respect to k prime over dk prime. This is why the index is important. Here the derivative of yesterday's k with respect to today's k, or today's k with respect to tomorrow's k. Here, it's k prime with respect to k prime. That's different. So let's take this derivative to figure this out. At the same time, this was our first order condition, so it's equal to zero. Um, let's find out what this is. Well, if we want to find out what the value function of k prime is, we can just add a prime to all the k's here, and we get exactly the same problem. So if we add a k, a prime here, we now have the value function of k prime. We maximize with respect to k double prime. Then in here we, have, we know k prime, um, and we optimize with respect to k double prime, and we have tomorrow's function depending on k double prime. So we can now take the derivative, dv k prime, dk prime, and this will be equal to, if you look at that, um, now this value function does not depend on k prime anymore. That's gone. So all we have is this term here. And we have the inner derivative here. So we get 1 plus r times u prime of 1 plus r times k prime minus k double prime. It is very important that you keep the indices here because this utility function is with respect to k prime with the first term. This one is with respect to k. It's very important. Okay, so we have all derivatives we want. Now we can put, plug this in here and we have our nice first order condition. Let me erase some stuff and write it up nicely up here. Oh, we don't need this anymore. Okay, let me write these two together up here. Let's take this to the other side so we lose the negative sign. We get u prime of 1 plus r k minus k prime is equal to, don't forget the beta here, times 1 plus r times this u prime of 1 plus r k prime minus k double prime. And we're almost at the Euler equation. The Euler equation gives us a trade-off of a future period relative to today's period. We're almost there. Now, it is convenient to simplify this expression in here. We know from this constraint that we can just replace this with c prime and this with c. Let's put all the choice variable on one side, which is also a common notation for the Euler equation, and everything else on the other side. We then get u prime of c over u prime of c prime. c prime is equal to beta plus 1 plus r. And this is the standard Euler equation. You can also obtain this very same Euler equation using the Lagrange method, but for some problems it's easier to go over the value function. Thank you for watching.